Hello learners, good afternoon. Today we will be dealing with the chapter the road not taken that is a part of your syllabus. The poem the road not taken was written by Robert Frost. He was an American poet who depicted realistic New England life through language and situations familiar to the common man. Robert Frost was an American poet and winner of four Pulitzer Prizes. His famous works include Fire and Ice, Mending Wall, Birches, Out Out, Nothing Gold Can Stay and Home Burial. His 1916 poem The Road Not Taken is often read at graduation ceremonies across the United States. Frost eventually became a poetic force and the unofficial poet laureate of the United States. Robert Frost wrote the road note taken as a joke for a friend, the poet Edward Thomas. When they went working together, Thomas was chronically indecisive about which road they ought to take and in retrospect often regretted that they should in fact have taken the other road. Soon after writing the poem in 1915, Frost gripped to Thomas that he had read the poem to an audience of college students and that it had been taken pretty seriously. Frost creates a multiplicity of meanings in the poem learners, never quite allowing one to supersede the other. Even as the road not taken describes how choices are inevitable in life. In the poem, the road not taken, the road symbolizes our life. The poet says that the path that we don't choose in our life is road not taken. Learners, he describes his feelings about that choice that he had left in the past. The path we have chosen describes our future, our destination. The important message that the poet wants to give is that the choice that we make has an impact on our future. And if we make a wrong choice, we regret it. But sadly, we can't go back on it. So we must be wise by making choices. Learners, the road not taken begins with a dilemma, as many fairy tales do. Out walking, the speaker comes to a fork or a juncture in the road and has to decide which path to follow. So learners, this is a picture of a fork. This can be described as the fork which is mentioned in the poem. So a fork is basically, a, it is a point from where two different paths start. Learners, now let's go through the poem together. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveller long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though, as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way. I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, somewhere, ages and ages hence, two roads diverged in a wood, and I took the one 
less traveled by and that has made all the difference. Learners, let's go through the poem line by line. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry I could not travel both. The poet while traveling on foot in the woods reaches a junction where two roads diverge. Once the poet was walking down a road and then there was a diversion. There were two different paths and he had to choose one out of them. The poet says that he was one person. He could not travel on both the roads. You know learners in this poem the poet is, co is confused. He says that he is just one person. How can he travel on both the roads? So one person can travel on one road at one time. Okay. So he is constantly talking about this dilemma in the poem. He had to choose one out of these two roads. In the poem, yellow wood means a forest with leaves which are wearing out and they have turned yellow in color in the season of autumn. It also represents a world which is full of people where people have been living for many years. They represent people who are older and the poet like you know in the poem so yellow it is described for older people. The poet kept standing there and looked at the path very carefully as far as he could. Before taking the path he wanted to know how it was. Was it suitable for him or no? He was able to see the path till from where it curved after which it was covered with trees and was hidden. It happens in our life learners also when we have choices, we have alternatives. But we have to choose only one out of them. We take time to think about the pros and cons, whether it is suitable for us or not and only then we take a decision on what path we should choose. The yellow leaves, again learners, I am repeating, the yellow leaves in the poem suggest that the poem is set in autumn, perhaps in a section of woods filled mostly with alder or birch trees. The yellow leaves also evoke a sense of transience. Transience means movement where one season will soon give away to another. Okay, so yellow leaves, they also evoke what? Yes, movement, transformation, change. Learners, let's go through lines 3 to 5. And be one traveler, long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. As it is possible to travel both the roads, the poet stands there trying to choose which path he is going to take. However, the poet wants to go down both paths and is thinking about it hard. He is staring down one road trying to see where it goes. But the small plants and greenery of the woods block his view. The poet kept on looking at one path for a long time to check if it is the right path for him or not. And then he decided and started walking on another path because he felt that both the paths are equally good. He says just as fair, so he felt that both paths were equally good and started walking on one of them. He adds that maybe he felt that the path the other path was better for him. So he chooses it as it had grass on it, which means that it was less used. So learners, what did you learn? What did you understand? You understood that the poet chose the path which was less traveled by. And how did he choose that? Because that path had more grass on it. 
so more grass meant that less people must have traveled on it and it was less used as compared to the other path so that is why he chose the less traveled and the less explored path not many people had walked on that path earlier that is why this path was grassy and wanted where means that it was not walked over by many people after he walked on the path for some distance he realized that both the paths had been worn out the same way both the paths were similar and worn out even in our life learners we take any path or option but all of them have the same benefits disadvantages problems challenges and we must face them we think that we are choosing a better option but it is not that way learners let's go through line 6 to 8 then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear this phrase could mean something like it is like just as fair as it is fair means something which is equal something which is righteous the poet decided to check the other path because he found the other road to be less traveled and more grassy the poet says that both the paths were similar that morning both had leaves on them and no one stepped on them as they were still green in color he decided that day he would take one path and keep the other path for another day although he knew that one way leads on to another way he knew he could not go back on the choice that he had made similarly even in our life once we choose an option we must keep on moving ahead with that option and we never get a chance to come back and take the other option that we had left earlier learners so always remember once you have decided something you cannot go back it becomes very difficult to go back and the same difficulty is faced by the poet okay so he has chosen a path and he thinks okay today i'll travel on this path but the next day i'll travel on the other path but that doesn't happen once you start walking on a path it becomes very difficult to come back to the fork yes to the juncture learners let's go through lines 9 to 10 though as for that the passing there had worn them really about the same after traveling through the road he found that both the roads are equally traveled first he found the first road to be more traveled one but then he says that both the roads to be equally traveled later in the poem learners the speaker calls the road he chose less traveled and it does initially strike him as slightly grassy or slightly less traveled but soon as he makes this claim however he doubles back erasing the distinction even as he makes it he says that in the future he will take a deep breath and say that once upon a time he had reached such a point in life that there were no options for him and he traveled on that road which had been traveled upon by lesser number of people that decision of his has led him to the future similarly in future learners when you grow up then you will say that once upon a time when you were young you had two options in your life but the choice that you made made you what you became of it this is very strong message for all the learners that you should be wise and be careful while making choices out of the options that you have in your life because your future depends on the choice that you make today okay learners so be wise in choosing your path 
the title of the poem you know the road not taken if you keep reading the poem you will notice that you know the title hovers over it like a ghost according to the title this poem is about absence it is about what the poem never mentions the choice the speaker did not make which still haunts him again however frost refuses to allow the title to have a single meaning the road not taken also evokes the idea of the road less traveled the road most people did not take and both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trodden black here again the poet found both the paths looking same perhaps he goes in the flashback it was tough for him to recognize the real world as in the morning he was the first person to walk on the road he couldn't decide the right path as no step had smashed the leaves on the roads to allow him to go for the right one learners these lines are an example of imagery okay we'll discuss about imagery and we'll discuss about the different literary devices mentioned in the poem later okay but keep on noting keep on jotting these points which i keep telling you okay let's go through lines 13 to 15 oh i kept the first for another day yet knowing how way leads on to way i doubted if i should ever come back the poet you know like i have said before the poet here saves the first road for another day he knows how way leads to another and then another until you end up very far away from where you started the poet here saves the first road for another day then in the third he doesn't think he will ever you know in the third stanza although he says he mentions in the poem that he is saving the first word for another day but by the end of the poem we know that he doesn't think he will ever come back and take the other path as much as he wishes he could i shall be telling this with a sigh this line is an example of poet's failure in choosing the right path the word sigh learners the word sigh reflects little bit of disappointment he feels because of his decision let's go through line 17 to 19 somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and i took the one less traveled he accepts the fact that he is a failure in taking the right decision ages and ages learners in this slide is an example of alliteration what is alliteration alliteration is basically repetition of consonants in a line okay so you can write it down ages and ages is an example of alliteration so learners why is the poet regretting he might be regretting because he chose the road less traveled he chose the path which was not taken up by many so this might be one of the reasons for his despondence okay for his sadness and that has made all the difference the poet took the path that no one else did and that is what has made the difference in his life and that has actually made him successful however a difference could be success or utter failure in the fourth stanza we can see that poet was talking about his past life he is talking about nostalgia talking about the two roads and the decision he made to choose the road he is taking this happily from the last stanza we can see that robert frost took the road which was less traveled by maybe he was a coward that is why he chose the log road and he was just joking by telling that 
But from the last line of the stanza, learners, it seems the poet may be happy for whatever decision he chose or for whatever road he chose and that has made all the difference with others. Learners, let's go through the analysis of the poem. So like you know, the, what is the rhyme scheme? The rhyme scheme of the poem is A, B, A, A, B. The poet in the poem decided to seize the day and express himself as an individual by choosing the road that was less explored. However, the narrator's decision to choose the less travelled path shows his courage. In terms of the beauty, both paths are equally fair. The narrator only distinguishes the path from another after he has already selected one and travelled for many years through life. The road not taken learners is Frost's Yes, most beloved poems and this poem is frequently studied in many high school literature classes. Learners, let's go through some themes of the poem. So the first theme that the poet mentions in the poem is choices. The road not taken centers on the concept of choice. The path that the speaker is working on is splitting into directions and he has to decide which way to go. This path not just in the woods but also represents a decision in his life. Something in his life is changing which is forcing him to make a choice. Yet, he has a really hard time deciding. One moment he thinks one way is better, the next both paths are about the same. Whether or not he has a reason why the choice he makes is better, he has to make it. Okay, So, he, he has to reason it out. Learners, even you do that before making a choice or before making a decision, you reason it out. So this poem, you can say that this poem is about reasoning. Before taking the final decision, yes, the poet is reasoning. So whether or not he has a reason why the choice he makes is better, he has to make it. And that choice changes his life. The second theme can be dreams, hopes and plans. Choices like the choice, the road not taken are linked to the future. The speaker of this poem realizes that his choice of path will change his life. But the tricky part about the nature of the future is that the speaker won't, won't know how his decision will change. His life until he has already changed it. The speaker thinks of his lost opportunities as his choice takes him into one future and leaves another behind. The third theme learners, yes, man and the natural world. Throughout the road not taken, nature is used as a metaphor for the life of speaker. The speaker contextualizes a major decision by writing about it as if it was something he encountered while walking in a forest in the season of autumn. This metaphor helps us to wrap our minds around the complexities of a choice that will decide his future. Learners, exploration is our next theme. A speaker is out in the woods without a map and he doesn't know which path to take. But instead of turning tail and running back to where he came from, he chose a path and forges on it learners. He moves on it. At least he's confident. He's confident and willing to face whatever challenges that path may lead him to. 
okay so explore exploration is an excellent theme he doesn't shy away from exploring he doesn't shy away or he doesn't fear the challenges come what may he's ready to face anything that comes on his way he is attracted to a path that might be less traveled which suggests that he likes to go where few people have gone before the road not taken learners yes it embraces exploration suggesting that the only way to see what's beyond the bend in the road is to keep on walking learners so what is the central message of the poem the road not taken the road not taken represents the speaker and the reader okay it presents the speaker and the reader with a state of confusion with a dilemma there are two roads in an autumnal wood wood learners yes forest so basically there are two roads in a forest separating off presumably the result of the one road splitting and there is nothing else to do but to choose one of the roads and continue life's journey the central message is that in life we are often presented with choices when making a choice one is required to take a decision viewing a choice as a fork as a juncture in a path it becomes clear that we must choose one direction or another but not both thank you for listening learners